Good morning, friends. Today is November the 28th. It's a cold, brisk Monday morning here in Georgia. Friend, I just want to share a thought with you this morning. A truth, actually. You know, <clears throat> God told the children of Israel that he was a jealous God and that he would not allow them to have any other gods before him. Now, <laughs> that doesn't mean that God will allow you to have a bunch of gods as long as you put him first. Uh, that's not what it means. God's not saying, I want 51% of your loyalty and devotion, and you can give 49% to the rest of your little gods. That is not what God is saying. God says, I am a jealous God, and you will not have any other gods before me. So, friend, God who is the only God, and when I say God, I'm referring to God who is known by many names <clears throat> that is revealed in his holy word. I am talking about the one who we know as the Father, which Jesus Christ came to reveal the Father, and then Jesus goes on to say that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then he tells us that he would send back the Holy Spirit. So you have God manifested and has manifested himself to us little human beings as Father, as the Son who is our Savior, and the Holy Spirit who is our comforter. And just because we can't understand how God can manifest himself in three different relationships with us, simply think of yourself as being the daughter to your parents or the son to your parents the grandson or the granddaughter to your grandparents and your daddy uh, and your daddy and mama to your children and on top of that you know you may be the boss to the people you work for so even you and I are manifested into different people so to speak or to different entities to different people in our lives, but we're still one person. And even taking it a step further, you have a body, you have a spirit, excuse me, uh, I got distracted there. You have a body, you are a spirit, and you possess a soul, your emotions, your will and so forth so there is even three parts to you that God has made your spirit you possess a soul and you live in a physical earthly body but one day praise God we are going to be giving a glorified body now <clears throat> back to our God being a jealous God and saying that he will not allow us to have any gods before him. Now, friend, there is a great benefit that comes with that. You see, there is nothing nor no one who can give you anything above, beyond, or better than what our God can give us. And our God 
has given us himself. So when we belittle the gift that our Heavenly Father has given us, and we go and seek after things of a lower nature, things which are less valuable, friend, we are throwing away the greatest treasure and seeking after something that is, can't even come close to what our God is trying his best to give us. You know, years ago, and I mean many years ago, <clears throat> when I really got on fire for Jesus, I prayed a prayer, and I was probably 16 or 17. I think I was in the 11th grade. Yes, 11th grade of high school when I really got on fire for the Lord and began reading his word and I just could not get enough of his word and couldn't get enough of going to church and singing the praises of God with other fellow brothers and sisters. I prayed a prayer and I asked the Lord in my prayer that I would rather die a young man than to live a ripe old age and one day fall away from his great salvation and I also asked the Lord that if anything ever came between me and him that I was right then and there giving him the right to remove it out of my life no matter what it was if if it was money I asked him, remove it out of my life. If it was a job or a career, God, if it came between me and Jesus, you have a right to remove it out of my life. Jesus, if my loved ones or any, any, or I, you know, <laughs> believe it or not, I even, you know, was praying, even if it was my girlfriend, of course, I wasn't thinking about getting married back then at those 17 years of age. But I did have a girlfriend. and uh, But I even prayed, you know, if she, if my girlfriend caused me to be pulled away from Jesus, I said, take her away from me. You know, that was the commitment that at a young age of 17 years of age that I gave him the right over my life that I had, hadn't even hardly began living at the age of 17. And here I am, 54, I'll be 55 in April. So friend, I, can, <laughs> I promise you, I can look back and I could tell you story after story after story of things that I was giving too much of my attention to and it was taking me away from my time with the Lord that it was taken away from me. I mean, I can give you many examples and, you know, times that uh, just it, people in, in, in times and in, in just things that we get so distracted with and so easily to can get caught up in, you know, spending all our time doing something else. You know, you can get so, uh, so involved and tied up in the work of the Lord and in ministry and you know maybe out trying to build up uh, you know the congregation or, or, or to spread the gospel that you yourself don't have any time to spend with the Lord uh, in a quiet 
one-on-one -on -one setting with the Lord. You know, he wants us to evangelize, but he also does not want us to abandon our relationship with him. You know, you can get so involved in building a career and growing your career and your income because you want to be a good provider for your spouse and children that it takes so much of your time you don't have time for your spouse or your children and friend even though it's honorable and good that you're trying to provide for your family you cannot abandon the time that your family needs with you and it's the same way with God you cannot get so involved in the things that's going on in your world that you don't have time to be with your loving Savior in an intimate setting where it's just you and the Lord loving on each other in a very profound spiritual relationship. So, our God is truly a jealous God. And friend, he does not want you to be so involved in the things that this life can take us away from him. He doesn't want you to get so involved that you don't have time for him. And friend, by spending time with the Lord will give you peace of mind. It will give you a overwhelming realization of His love for you. So today as you embark on today and the days to come, please remember that our God, even though he is jealous, his jealousy for us is something that is good for us because there is nothing nor no one who can give us the things that we need more than our God. And you know, Jesus said it this way, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He didn't say that you didn't need bread, but he says you can't live by bread alone. The bread, my friend, of this life will only give you life on this earth. But when you eat the bread on this earth and you eat the bread that God gives us, not only will you continue to live on this earth until the time for you to go, but when you do go, <laughs> praise God, you will have eternal life. Your life will never end. You will never face death. Oh, you will face a physical death, but my friend, you will not face an eternal death. And that's the reason why Jesus said, you cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It's just not only life on earth that we need, my friend. We need life that God offers us through his loving Savior. The gift that Christ gave on the cross. That, my friend, gives us eternal life when we accept the gift of Christ. So, friend, let's stay focused on this one truth and here's the truth that God wants us to put him in first place 
of our life. Jesus said, if you love your father or your mother or your brother or your sister, if you love them more than me, you're not worthy of me. Friend, no one has died for you on the cross except for Jesus Christ. No one has given their life for you other than Jesus Christ. No one loves you more than Jesus Christ. No one prays for you more than Jesus Christ. No one cares about you more than Jesus Christ. So tell me why would you love your father or your mother or your brother or sister or your job or a sports team or anything that can easily draw our attention away from our loving Savior? Why would you give something or someone more of our time and our thoughts and our energy more than Jesus Christ. Friend, I tell you the reason why. Because we take Jesus Christ for granted. We take Jesus for granted. Oh, you know Jesus loves us. This I know. For the Bible tells us so. And we take his love for granted. Friend, we can't do that. We must respect Jesus more than that. Yes, it's true. His love will never fail. And I believe it's because we know that his love will never fail that we take his love for granted. We work harder, harder in our careers and getting a human being to love us and care about us, we work harder to get that girlfriend to like us and to marry us, or that boyfriend to like us and maybe to marry us. We work harder at those earthly relationships than we do our eternal relationships. And the reason why that is, is because we have this little feeling of, well, I'm saved and satisfied now. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that's all I want. I just want to make sure I don't go to hell. So, Jesus, I've accepted you. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, I've got all that I want out of you, Jesus. I'm not going to go to hell. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to go work on my career and my earthly relationships. Friend, we can't do that. We cannot do that. Yes, we're saved. And yes, the love of Jesus never fails. But friend, there are higher heights and deeper depths to experience in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is revelations of God that he wants to share with you. So friend, don't be saved and satisfied. Always abounding in the work of the Lord and the knowledge of our Lord. Seek the Lord every day while he may be found. Friend, don't get satisfied with your relationship with Christ. Always hunger and seek after righteousness and a closer relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you, my friend. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day.